Hi, my name is Kurt Ingleiter. I'm a product manager at Oracle, and I'm gonna demonstrate some features of the database diagnostics and tuning pack. We're essentially gonna go through the find, fix, validate workflow. Here we are on the database homepage, and we kind of see that some work that the database is doing. We see the DB time, green is CPU, and blue is IO. And we're gonna to try to analyze this performance. So we're gonna go ahead to the performance hub. I'll click on performance, performance hub, and the default page of ASH Analytics. ASH stands for Active Session History. The database samples every active database session once a second and stores a, a large number of pieces of information about what each database, active database session is doing. And that's what we see in ASH. At the top of the page, we have the time picker. The time picker allows us to indicate which time that we're interested in doing the analysis of. We can uh, expand it, contract it, move it back and forth. Um, and we ha usually have available by default the last eight days of database performance. We can go back for the last eight days and look at the ASH data. As we move the time picker back and forth, the middle chart is the drill down data that demonstrate all the data for that time range is selected. And by default, it shows the average active sessions by weight class. The, as we sample every um, database session once a second, the database session is either in CPU, IO, or active weight. And so those are the various weight events. And those weight events are all categorized into weight classes. And here we see on this chart, we've got CPU, IO, and a concurrency weight event. I can look at this data by various other dimensions. So for example, I could just go ahead and choose to look at this data through the weight event. And here we see the breakdown of the weight events that make up those weight classes that I just saw. So again, CPU is, is by far the most. Then we have the various weight events that make up the IO. And finally, somewhere on this chart, we have the library uh, cache load lock, which is, which is a weight event, a concurrency weight event. And that's why we saw the concurrency weight of category at the, at the top level. Or another way we could see this, another dimension that we could look at this data from is top SQL. And so these are the top SQL that are executing over, the, over this time range. And you'll notice as I, as I highlight uh, color on the right-hand side of the chart, the corresponding SQL ID is highlighted. So this gives me information about the SQL that's executing over that time range. I'm gonna return now to the top dimension, the default is weight class. Now on the ASH Analytics page, um, by default, in the lower left-hand corner, we see the top SQL for the time range. And as we highlight over the SQL, we can see the SQL text for that individual SQL. And again, we see this top SQL is significantly using a significant portion of the database resources. On the bottom right, we see the top user sessions. We see the user uh, session ID on the left, the username on the right, and then uh, arranged again from top to bo bottom, the top 10. Uh, user sessions by weight class. Now another key feature of the Performance Hub is real-time SQL monitoring. What real-time SQL monitoring uh, shows us is for the time range selected in the time picker, the SQL, every execution of a SQL that took more than five seconds of elapsed time or running in parallel. And it gives us some basic information about that SQL. What we can do is we can drill down into that SQL and, and gather much more comprehensive information. So the top of the real uh, uh, here at the top of the page, we see the SQL ID, some information about the execution, some execution, some information about the database resources it used. At the bottom of the page, we see the SQL execution plan for the SQL, and this is a relatively simple, straightforward SQL execution plan to table access falls, a nested loop, a sort. But the really key thing here is we can see on the right-hand side, the amount of DB time, the amount of database activity that each line of the execution statement took up. So here we see this table access full at the bottom took up 87% of the DB time. 
and then the sort took up the other 13%. So if I were to tune the SQL myself, if I wanted to make the SQL run better, I would focus my tuning uh, efforts on the first of all, the stable access full, and then second of all, on the sort, because that's where all the time and the data in this individual SQL uh, spent, all the DB time. Now let's go back to the ASH analytics. Or rather than tuning the SQL by myself, again, I noticed that this, that, that SQL ID is the one consuming a great majority of the database resources. I could try running the SQL tuning advisor and see what it thinks would be a good way to optimize the SQL statement. So I highlight the SQL, and I'll go ahead and click on the tune SQL uh, button, which executes the SQL tuning advisor. A screen comes up asking me some of the defaults uh, asking me whether I want to change any of the defaults for the execution of the SQL tuning advisor. I'll say no, I'll say go ahead and run it. And I'm submitting the SQL tuning advisor. Now SQL tuning advisor will actually execute two individual steps. First of all, it will create a SQL tuning set from the selected SQL, which is just a SQL tuning set is just a container that contains the SQL and some information about its execution in, in a container. Secondly, the SQL tuning advisor then will run and do a comprehensive analysis of the SQL statement. It will look for a variety of ways to improve the performance. It will look to see if all the object statistics of the SQL references are up to date, you know, the table statistics, index statistics. It will look for uh, non-obvious correlations in the data between the various uh, objects accessed by the SQL statement. It will look in the AWR to see maybe there was a better execution uh, uh, better execution of the SQL in the past and maybe a different execution plan would be good. And after doing the comprehensive analysis, then we get the results uh, that we see here from the SQL Tuning Advisor. So we have two recommendations. One is it possibly says maybe creating a SQL profile will improve the performance. And it says creating a SQL profile will result in a 99.9% .9 improvement in the performance of the SQL statement. What a SQL profile is, is really a set of additional information that can be provided to the database optimizer to help the optimizer choose a better plan. So again, the tuning advisor thinks the SQL profile will result in a 99% improvement in performance. It also makes a recommendation of possibly creating some indexes. And that again says it, that would produce a nice benefit. We wanna make sure that our solution is tightly scoped to the problem that we're looking at. So we'll, we're looking at individual SQL statement, and um, if we create indexes, that might impact other SQL statements. So therefore, the SQL profile seems like the one worthy of uh, pursuing further. So SQL profile recommended 99% improvement. We have this button here, validate with SPA, SQL Performance Analyzer. And what I can do is if I click on the validate with SPA, SQL Performance Analyzer will execute the SQL without the SQL profile, with the SQL profile, measure it, and then tell me for sure what is the real result of implementing the SQL profile. So I'll go ahead and click on Validate with SPA. And it's going, the database is going ahead submitting a SQL Performance Analyzer job. And it's created a job, and here we see the name of the job. So let's go ahead and click on that and see uh, what SQL Performance Analyzer has to say. And here we have the SQL, uh, SQL Performance Analyzer task is already completed. And let's go look at the results. So SQL Performance Analyzer ran the SQL without the profile and with the profile. And basically it's telling us we have an enormous improvement. It's actually saying 100%. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail. And also that it has a new uh, execution plan that's resulted in this improvement. What we see here is we measured an elapsed time and without the SQL profile, the SQL statement took about 14.7 some seconds to execute. And with the profile, it took 0.01 seconds. So 14 seconds to 0.01 seconds, so an enormous improvement. In fact, that's a 99.9% .9 improvement. So now we know for sure 
that that SQL profile will result in incredibly improved performance. This 99.9 .9 is, of course, rounded. We don't have decimals on the top chart, and that's why you end up with the 100% with the, uh, improvement. It's really 99.9% .9 improvement. So what we've seen here is we did the find, we looked at the database performance, we saw SQL using a larger amount of resources than we thought it should be. We fixed it by running the SQL Tuning Advisor, and then we validated that the recommended solution does provide a, a good benefit by running SQL Performance Analyzer. So this has been the find, fix, validate workflow. Thank you very much.